So today we're looking at the Apeman A100 Trawo action camera. So here we are. This is the A100 running at 4K 50 frames per second. Now the one thing I must mention about this camera straight away, you need to make sure the SD card is fast enough to support the highest resolution. So the A100 action camera it's a 4K video camera capable of recording up to 50 frames per second and it can take up to 20 megapixel photos. So let's get inside this thing. Now this camera is an alternative to the well-known GoPro brand. An ape man have kindly sent this over to me today for review and testing. So straight away we can see a nice thick and chunky instruction manual for this camera. That will come in handy to learn how to use this product. Share your shopping experience on Amazon and claim a free gift. And then straight away we can see the camera. Just place that to one side and just see what else is in this box. Okay, so what you're seeing here is a 4K video of me riding the scooter with the A100 camera. Now this is actually recording at a lower frame rate. So this is at 24 frames per second. And uh, I just wanna show you here the difference between the smoothness in this footage and the footage that's coming up again in a second. And this shot here is now 1080p running at 60 frames per second. And one thing to notice as well, if you record at a higher frame rate, you can then slow the footage down and it makes it easier to work on later on. One thing to notice, on an overcast day, some cameras struggle to record at higher frame rates because they're not getting enough light into the lens. Now I'm currently using the live feed from the camera down to the phone so I can see exactly what it's doing. So what I'll do, I'll turn the camera around so you can see out the windscreen and then you'll be able to get an idea of what the picture quality is like and whether you could use it as a dash cam. We have all of the accessories that come with this camera. And from what I can see online, it comes with a lot of different bits and pieces to accompany it. So let's have a look inside here. Two lithium ion batteries. Charger. Mounting brackets. More mounting brackets. More mounting brackets, sticky mounts. You know what, I'm just gonna tip these out. There's so many. <laughs> there's loads in here. We've got some cable ties. Looks like there's a, a non-waterproof case back cover there. So if you want the audio to get in, you've got little slits in it to get the audio through. More mounts. Clip-on mount. Ah, and my most favorite mount. This is called a frame mount. And the idea of this is rather than being waterproof or um, protected in any way, this just allows the pure elements in. So you'll hear all of the audio uh, and you'll get the best quality of video as well. I'll show you what I do with this later to stop some of the wind noise. All right, so we've turned that camera around. It's pointing out the front windscreen, a bit like a dash cam would do. Now, the first thing that struck me was just how good quality that image is for the price you're paying for this camera. The one thing that does let this camera down, and it's an honest review, is the audio. But then a lot of GoPros and a lot of other action cameras have that same issue. You can also plug in external mics to these cameras to make them slightly better. Here's a couple of different shots with the camera stuck to the car. It's always worth checking and double checking that your suction cup mount is securely fastened to the body. <laughs> Otherwise, disaster! <laughs> But on the other hand, this shows its durability because the camera still works fine. The camera offers a function where you can loop record your videos. So what this means is the camera will loop the video when it gets to a certain size on the SD card. I was driving through the town centre when I was following a car that was acting very suspicious. So I kept my distance from it. And as you can see here, with uh, no indication at all, it just pulls out to the left hand side. And I get a lovely response. But yeah, as you can see, there's absolutely loads of accessories that come with this camera. Let's just get them out of the way for a minute and let's focus on the camera itself. It's automatically in its waterproof case. Now to release this, we just have to press this little arrow in and then the case undoes and you can get the camera out from the back. 
like so. Put that to the side for a minute and you can see straight away it's got a little peel on the lens, we'll just take that off. Now this camera records in lots of different frame rates and resolutions. Now straight away it's really compact, it's very light, you can see that it's got a screen on the back, let's take the peel off of that, it's got Ape Man written on the back, Trawo written on the front, this is the top, you've got a shoot button, an on and off button with mode, and on this side you've got an up and down arrow for the menu. You've got the microphone, another microphone, and then under this panel just here is the in out slot. So you've got an SD port, micro USB, micro HDMI. Now the exact SD card I'm going to use for this camera is a SanDisk Extreme 64 gig. This is a class 10 SD card, SDXC. Now the battery compartment's underneath and there's a little clip that you flick over to release the tray. And the battery can only go in one way. Now we're ready to turn on the camera for the very first time. So I took the camera out on some trails on the scooter because I wanted to test out the stabilisation. I was really pleasantly surprised because although we're travelling at quite some speed, the footage is very stabilised. I then went onto the grass and as you can see my arms and hands are shaking like crazy but the footage is very still. Even at extreme angles and off-roading on gravel, this camera appears very smooth indeed. In all of these shots I had the white balance set to auto and the scene set to overcast cloudy and that seems to have done me a favour because the footage seems to have come out really well. From the main screen we can start filming straight away with the top record button just here. And we can stop at any time. The left button for mode allows you to take photos and then view any files that are stored on the SD card. And then on the last screen we've got settings. From here we can configure the camera, we can change the video resolution, the image size, we can turn time lapse on, we can put slow motion on, coming down further, anti-shake on, the encode mode, H.265 or H.264, lens angle, in my case I like to film in narrow rather than wide, if you're doing extreme sports or maybe underwater you'd probably want it in wide, shooting timer, burst shot, microphone on and off, exposure compensation, ISO, auto white balance, DNG on or off, scene for colouring, rotate on or off, light frequency, language, loads and loads of different settings. If we go back into the camera mode, if you press the up button just here, it enables Wi-Fi. Now I've got my phone, we're going to join the Wi-Fi. Now on the back of the device it tells you what the SSID name is and the password. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Join. Once we've got the tick, we can then go ahead and go into the app itself. It's called YouTube Pro. And there we have it. We can now see a feed from this camera live. So wherever I put the camera, you can see what it's seeing on the screen here. Now that's a confusing sight, I know. <laughs> camera on camera. <laughs> Hello. So in the settings, we can change the resolution, the encode mode, the coloring, exposure, etc. scene settings. It's really handy. It obviously allows you to take pictures remotely and videos. So we can change this to, if we go into car mode, video lapse, slow motion. So it will let you record at 120 frames per second change it to photo, we can view the existing files on the device, as we recorded the first time just then. Now no matter where this camera goes, you're seeing the live feed on the screen. And the other thing to note, it's quite a fast feed back down to that device.
So whilst it's broadcasting its image, you can see on the back there's a blue light there for Wi-Fi. When I use the record button, you'll see on the front of the camera, it starts to flash, so you know it's recording. The screen on the back is two inches and it's IPS, and it is really quite clear. As we mentioned earlier, this is the completely waterproof case. Now the setup I like to use with action cameras is a frame mount and then a wind muff, and this stops the wind from entering the microphones. This is the same setup for when I'm using my GoPro Hero 7 Black. We need the camera in the frame mount, and then we need to put the camera itself onto the tripod. And the final thing I do is put the actual wind muff on top. So what this gives you is the ability to film outside without any wind noise. So here we are guys at the end of the video. So what I'll do is just give you a few more shots of the action camera doing its thing at high speed on the scooter and then I'll finish the video off and say goodbye. If you guys are interested in picking up one of these cheap action cameras, I'll put a link down below in the description box to Amazon. So I personally thought this camera was quite good. It only costs £65 in the UK, and there's an Amazon link down below if you're interested. Thank you so much for watching this video with the Ape Man action camera called the A100. If you liked this, please subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Bye.